Formulas are the most important Excel skill you can master, but when you start nesting functions, things can quickly get out of hand. In this lesson, I'm going to cover some little known Excel formula writing tips, tricks and tools that will give you ninja level skills and enable you to decipher any formula, even ones you haven't written yourself. When you first learn to write formulas, you'll typically use regular cell references like we see here with D2 to D26 and C2 to C26. And this is okay, except when it comes time to interpreting the formula at a later date, because it's just not easy to figure out what that formula is doing. You need to locate the cells being referenced by going back and forth between the data and the formula to try and understand what's going on. However, if we format the source data that we're referencing in an Excel table, the formula can be understood right from within the cell. Now I can use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl T to format the data in a table. My data has headers, so I'll click OK here. And if we go to the table design tab, you can see the table's been given the name table two. We can give it a more useful name. I'll call it sales data. Just simply type it in the table name field. And then when we write our formulas, we can use the mouse to reference the data. So I want to look up the sales column, I'm just positioning the mouse above the column header. When I click, it selects the whole column. And you can see in the formula bar, it's completed the structured reference, which comprises of the table name and the column name. So I want to index the sales and find a match for socks. And another way we can write the formula is by typing the table and column names in the formula. So I want sales data, and there it is there. The IntelliSense has prompted me, tab to select it, and it's in the column product. Close my square brackets, and then I want an exact match, so that's zero. Close match, close index, and press enter. Now I think you'll agree that this is much clearer than the regular cell references. Another benefit of using Excel tables is that the structured references automatically include any new data added to the table. So there's no need to edit formulas to pick up new cells. Now I can't recommend Excel tables enough. Automatic updating and structured references are just a couple of the benefits of using tables. You can see them all in my Excel tables course, linked to in the video description. Now if you can't or don't want to format your data in an Excel table, we well, must be crazy. But if you insist, then another option is to define names for the ranges you need to reference in your formulas. Or if you're expecting your data to grow, then you should use dynamic named ranges. There are links in the video description to tutorials on these topics. Now, when you start nesting functions inside one another, it's a good idea to wrap the individual components onto separate lines so that it's easy to read. We can do this in the formula bar. I'll just drag it down to make it a bit wider. Place your cursor where you want the line break and then Alt and Enter to wrap it onto the next line. We can do that at each step in the formula. That's just going to make it easier to see the individual components and understand what's going on. Alternatively, if you have Excel 2013 or later, you can use the advanced formula environment. So let's do that. We'll copy the formula here. And then on the home tab of the ribbon, you'll find the advanced formula environment. If it's not there, I'll show you how to get it in a moment. It opens a pane on the right hand side. Clicking on the plus, we get to name our new formula. I'm just going to call it test because this is just temporary. And then in the refers to paste in your formula, make sure you delete the equals at the beginning because there's already one here. And then click add. And you can see it automatically formats the formula for you. All you need to do then is copy it and go back to the formula bar and paste it in. And now I have my nicely formatted formula. Unfortunately, in the formula bar, it doesn't retain the nice color formatting that we get in the advanced formula environment. Alternatively, you can define the formula as a name. If you do that, you'll want to give it a proper name. And then click on the sync icon here to save it to the name manager. And you can then reference that formula as a name. Now, if you don't have the advanced formula environment, you can get it by inserting it via the insert tab and then add-ins, get add-ins, and then type in the search bar advanced formula environment, select it from the list here and click add. It'll then be available on your home tab on the far right.
Now we should try and avoid hard keyed values in formulas like we did in the previous examples where the lookup value SOX is hard keyed. Instead, it's better to place the value in a cell and then reference that cell from your formulas. Then if you need to update it, you simply edit that one cell and it's going to update all the formulas. Even better is to give this cell a name. We can do that via the name box up here. So let's just call this prod. And then in our formulas, we can reference prod. There it is in the list instead of the cell reference, which makes the formula much easier to read. Alternatively, you could define the constant in a name. So via the formulas tab, define name, we'll call it products just to differentiate it. And in here, we're going to enter the name and click OK. And now instead of prod, let's reference products, our new defined name. And you can see it's now ignoring this value and referencing socks again. Then if we need to update that, we can just go into the formulas tab and into the name manager. And under products, instead of socks, we might want wheels. Click the check mark and close. And you can see it's now updated. So it's a very efficient way to manage constants in formulas because you only need to update it in one place. It then feeds through to all formulas that use that name. If you've ever experienced Excel not letting you enter a formula because you're missing a closing parenthesis or you just can't see where it should go, then you'll find these formula navigating tips helpful for identifying where each component of the formula starts and ends. When you're in edit mode inside a formula, either in the formula bar or in the cell itself, the tooltip often gets in the way. And we can left click and drag it once we get our four headed arrow by hovering over the edge of the tooltip and then we can just move it out of the way. We can use the tooltip to navigate through the formula using the hyperlinks. So as I hover my mouse, I get the blue hyperlink and I can click on that to select that part of the formula. The bold argument in the tooltip indicates the current location of the cursor or the selected component of the formula. If we look at match and I jump to match type, you can see that after the last argument, I should have a closing bracket or parentheses. We can see one here for the match functions match type argument. And if I go back to index and click on the last argument that's populated, you can see we don't have a column number because it's not offering me a hyperlink. So row number is my last argument. And I can see I should therefore have a closing parenthesis after that. And I do. Now, if you can't remember how a function works, you can click on the function icon up in the formula bar and it'll open the function wizard. The function wizard dialog box contains more information about the function and each argument. You may have managed to get Excel to accept your formula, but perhaps it's not returning the correct results. Here we have a couple of tools that will help identify where the problem is. We can evaluate components of the formula, either in the cell, in edit mode, or in the formula bar. Let's do the formula bar. I'm going to jump to the row number argument. And then if I want to see what that returns, I can press the F9 key on my keyboard and we can see it returns 10. I can continue selecting elements and pressing F9 to get the results. I won't press it here because it's going to return the whole column of sales data. We can control Z to undo the last element evaluated or escape to exit and return the formula to its prior unevaluated state. Sometimes you have many nested functions and elements, and it's difficult to tell what order Excel is evaluating in. And that's when the evaluate formula tool is handy. It takes you step by step through the formula in order of evaluation, displaying the results one component at a time. We'll find it on the formulas tab and then evaluate formula. The next part of the formula to be evaluated is indicated with an underline. And if the formula references the result of another formula, you can step in and step out of the reference formulas. In this example, cell C7 contains a formula. So I can step into that. And now I can see the formula contained in cell C7. I can go ahead and evaluate parts of that formula and then step back out. And it completes the evaluated element. And we can see the underline indicates that that's the next part to be evaluated. I can go ahead and click on that. It returns true. Then it's going to evaluate C7 again. 
I can step in, evaluate it, or step back out, and continue from there until we get the final result. It doesn't change anything in the cell itself, and we can restart if we need to see it again. Now the limitation of the Evaluate Formula dialog box is that you can't make it any bigger, and often it's just too small to display the entire formula results, which means a lot of scrolling, making it difficult to use. I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can download the quick reference Excel file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.